controversial early season Atlantic Division showdown between top 10 teams. The Louisville Cardinals now favored at kickoff in their home stadium against the second ranked Florida State Seminoles and their quarterback DeAndre Francois who's proven his talent and his toughness. This is his first true road start. Lamar Jackson you've seen the highlights you've heard the hype but Jackson a Florida native will get his biggest test against this hungry Seminoles defense. An electric new atmosphere in Louisville for the Cardinals and the Seminoles. And welcome Chris Fowler Colonel Kirk Herbstreet showing Lamar Jackson like quicks getting up here from the game day set. Well done. I had a lot of help there but uh, this is great man. It, it, it doesn't feel like a noon. No kick. it does not. This is hyped. I mean these two teams are ready. So much at stake here. And an opportunity for Louisville to perhaps get their biggest regular season victory ever. They've come close led the Knowles each of the last couple of years let it slip away and they finished today. Well, that's the thing. I mean, two years ago I was in this stadium and they were up big up by 21 and Florida State had kind of that typical comeback and last year even down in Tallahassee up in the second half and it's, it's funny you talked to Bobby Petrino their entire offseason has been about finishing and for these opportunities against teams like Florida State. Petrino and the Cardinals five and three in each of their first two seasons in the ACC. So this game represents a huge breakthrough opportunity in the much stronger Atlantic Division. Jimbo Fisher's team opens as an underdog for the third time in the last 66 games. Think about that. Louisville was an underdog coming in. The public had made them the favorite here. So DeAndre Francois in his first true road start. Interesting how he handles this environment. Yeah, there's been so much talk about Lamar Jackson this week and after the first two weeks you can make a very strong argument. He's probably the hottest player in the country, but this is the day. This is the game. You find out if if he and his offense are ready because the talent they're going up against is much much better. Louisville always gets the ball to start the game because their opponents almost always will defer and Petrito always wants the ball to start. The Knowles did win the toss. They deferred and we're going to see Lamar Jackson for whom it's been incredibly easy Kirk against Charlotte and Syracuse. He's averaging 10 or 11 yards per play in limited snaps and blowouts. That is ridiculous. Yeah, Don't expect and, that today. No, no. And, and Lamar Jackson is capable, but if you're Florida State and you look at those numbers, you know what it really is about? The defensive line affecting the line of scrimmage. Beating Louisville's offensive line, or can Louisville's offensive line hold their own? So, to kick it away, Logan Tyler, the true freshman for the Seminoles. Cravion Samuel and Jair Alexander are deep for the Cardinals in this hyped environment. And the lefty Tyler boots it through the end zone. And so a touchback. And we'll get a very quick look at this quarterback who comes from Boynton Beach, Florida. Got his feet wet as a true freshman. Excelled late in the year and has been explosive in the first two games. Yeah, when he gets out in the open field, it's dangerous. Florida State has to be worried about his running ability. Big arm with accuracy. Wait till you see his ability to throw the ball downfield today. And that'll be big for Florida State. They've had some busts in coverage, broken coverages. And Louisville looking to exploit that this afternoon. Deep shot for a touchdown on the very first play against Syracuse. Doesn't happen today as they hand it off to Brandon Radcliffe, and he's loose. Radcliffe into Florida State territory, so no deep shot, but still a big play to get things going. You know, we, we haven't talked yet, but Derwin James, their best player, with it out this with a knee injury out for the next five to seven weeks in the first play his replacement AJ Westbrook with a missed tackle near the line of scrimmage gives Ratcliffe room to run you feel the loss of James on the first play there is no way to replace him his vocal leadership and his versatility back there 30 yard gain and now Jackson in the pocket delivers a strike far side and it's quick making the catch forced out that's his favorite target. It, it will be an interesting matchup with the skill and experience of the Louisville wide receivers going up against this secondary from Florida State. That's why I said if if you're a Knowles fan or a, a coach or a player to Marcus Walker and, and the rest of that defensive line they have to really be aggressive and athletic and be a difference maker up front. Two back look and a handoff out of the slot Samuel. Lowers the shoulder for a small guy who's 170 pounds. He delivers the blow to Marquez White, loses the chains. And one of the ways.
ways you handle Demarcus Walker is his own reading. You just read him on the option. That's time. That's exactly what they did. You don't have to worry about blocking him. He stayed inside on the quarterback, Lamar Jackson, and it opened up for the handoff there to Samuel. So a couple of first downs, and Jackson on play action steps up, goes far side, wide open. Jalen Smith was running free. And he missed him. Well, th this is becoming somewhat of a, a, a familiar theme for Florida State. And this tempo is causing miscommunication, broken coverage in the back end. Remember, Derwin James is not back there. They, a couple guys were playing man. Another guy's playing zone. They missed it. And very, very fortunate that Jackson missed a wide open receiver there in Jalen Smith. He's known for his accuracy, especially on deep balls. That was an uncharacteristic miss. So. Jackson keeps it play action second and ten a high shot delivered and Smith has it Jalen Smith bangs down stays in the end zone and they're gonna knock him out short they spot him just short he thought he got in Westbrook filling in for James there on the stop but it's first and goal great patience by Jackson nobody even close to Smith that time and he's able to come up I thought he steps out of bounds there for sure but a great play call here Bobby Petrino has this defense at Florida State right now on their heels and confused on this opening drive so first and goal they moved it 73 yards in five plays it can be very dangerous down in this area Radcliffe is the back. They like these two tight end looks. Keeper, Jackson, cuts back, scores! Third straight game, but against a much tougher opponent, the Cardinals' offense strikes very quickly. Exactly how you draw it up for Louisville and Bobby Petrino. Six plays, 75 yards. Their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, with all the hype, everybody wondered how would he maybe handle this exposure. And if the first drive's any indication, he's settled in quite nicely. Evan O'Hara adds the extra point. They like to make horse racing analogies here. The Cardinals are like that horse that bolts out of the starting gate, takes the quick lead. They've won wire to wire their first two. See if they can do it again. Francois gets his first crack with the football coming up, but it's seven zip Louisville. So Anthony George, the walk on, who just joined the team in preseason camp, kicks it away, and Kerber Whitfield's going to have a chance from the five. Herman kind of wiggles his way across to the 30 as the Knowles got to answer this scoring drive. And, yeah, six plays, 75 yards, and they take control of things. A missed tackle right there, again, by Westbrook, who's in for Derwin James. That opened up this offense, got Florida State on their heels. Play action was beautiful, found some open receivers. A couple times Florida State busted some coverages. And look at this, he's mi he misreads 16 Q, but even after he misreads it on the zone read, he still makes a couple guys miss and overcomes that misread and gets in the end zone let's see what Francois can do now yeah, that stirs the crowd up even more now so Francois well protected pump fakes takes off he showed his running ability against the Rebels a pair of 31 yard runs in that opener and I think it's important for Francois to come into this game and, and again he's a, he's a freshman a redshirt freshman we saw him Labor Day night did a good job of being tough resiliency and toughness and what uh, Jimbo Fisher calls yard ball Things aren't always going to be perfect for his quarterbacks. A guy's going to miss a block. A guy's going to run the wrong route. You have to be the eraser and fix those things when they break down. Both QBs can play yard ball here today. Under pressure delivers a strike to Izzo, and the tight end is rumbling up near midfield. It'll be a first down. They expect him to get very involved this season. Yeah, he's a great receiver, former uh, high school basketball player, and loved the call by Jimbo Fisher early in the game. Crowds into the game, defense on the field for the first time at home. They're flying around, little misdirection. Tight end slips out in the flat. Izzo, easy throw for his young quarterback. He'll pick up 14 yards. And they pitch it to Cook, who tries to get the edge, and does, and scoots into Louisville territory, first down inside the 40. This Florida State offense, I think, grew up the night you and I saw him on Monday night. This was the play that really turned the game around. Young's DeAndre Francois 
got them, made this throw, scored before half, cut into that 21-point deficit. Lineman, I think, recognized. Look at his toughness there. They learned a lot about him on that play, and it's carried over into last week and then today, and I think they trust him, which is very key with a new young quarterback. Cook, after a 14-yard game, gets it again, tries the left side for about three. Dalvin was fresh legs two years ago, came off the bench, scored a couple crucial touchdowns against Louisville, and then last year, with a bad hammy, Kirk, he was maybe... 75 80 percent but they couldn't tackle him ran for a buck 63 in that comeback win that's right and people know that he's going to run the ball so they've been geared up to stop him so they've been throwing the ball to him a lot more and last two plays it's nice to see number four have a little bit of room to wiggle and pick up some yards on the ground he is overdue for a home run Let's see if he gets one this afternoon give it to him again on second down Cardinals close it down a short game that time as Josh Harvey Clemens the senior former Georgia Bulldog was there it'll be third and about four that was a great look before the snap and what Dalvin Cook sees on almost every snap on first and second down he's got nine red helmets staring at him expecting and anticipating him getting the football that's why it's so hard for Florida State to run the ball that's why they relied on Francois and quick passing game and then go back to Cook because if he can run the ball, that sets up play action and takes a lot of pressure off of the quarterback. Now the first third down, they needed 19. Just four this time. Francois under pressure, incomplete. Again, he was trying to get the ball to Cook, and again, the pass rush was in his face. Well, there's a lot of confusion because a lot of different movement, and they ended up bringing Hearns up the middle, and also, watch these two linebackers, outside linebackers, Hearns and also Devontae Fields. They bring them late. See the right guard late in reacting and getting over. That's a true freshman, Landon Dickerson, confused by the look. Great so job field goal attempt, Kirk, coming up, but this is Ricky Aguayo, who... Broke a school record six for six against Ole Miss on opening night. Of course, Roberto's little brother. This is about uh, a 50-yarder. This is about his range in warm-up. This will be the longest of his very young career. And it starts left and stays left. Had plenty of leg, but the Nulls come up empty. So the first miss of Aguayo's career gave it a ride, but just never gave it a chance. Yeah, I looked out to refer to Mike Black, who's the expert up here. He uh, he actually looked like he hit it pretty good. But like you saying, he came through too heavy. Yeah, he's the Great. technician up here in our yeah, booth, exactly. former kicker at Boise State. But he's been he has been solid seven for seven yep. coming in to tonight. And uh, as you said, he has plenty of leg at 50 yards. He just ended up pulling that a little bit to the left. Reggie Bonifan, the former quarterback, now receiver, is in the backfield. Jackson gets it to him, and he's wide open. A lot of space for Bonifant on the edge in the Knowles territory. Knocked down inside the 40, and that formation seemed to confuse the Knowles again. They, they stacked two receivers to the right. They actually brought a safety in Marcus Lewis, and nobody picked up Bonifant out to the flat on the right. I think the stacked look of the receivers confused the secondary uh, combined with the blitz from uh, Marcus Lewis. Nobody left out in the flat. Great recognition by Lamar Jackson to find that weakness and dump it down. They got 24 yards. Bonifant started five games at quarterback in 2014. Played a little bit there last year before losing the job. Now contributing on the edge. This is Radcliffe getting the edge in another good first down game before Trey Marshall forced him out. Offensive line holding their own up there. I, I really wondered coming into this game how, how they would perform. They had four of the five back from a year ago, and I think that experience helps them. I think they have great confidence, and, and I think the continuity and the communication is very good with them. But that time they set the edge and, and gave Radcliffe enough time to get around the corner. Radcliffe has it again. Cuts it back. In the open field, inside the 20, and the Cardinals are rolling, threatening in the red zone again. Terrific block by Cole Hicatini, the tight end. Yeah, watch Hicatini. He's in motion, and he comes back. Just follow him. Nice, slow, developing play. Good vision. Cuts back. He, and, and actually, Radcliffe set it up perfectly by going outside and giving Hicatini a chance to get leverage and just pushed him out, and then he cut back underneath that. It's a great run, and they're now back deep into the Knowles territory. Jackson keeps it. Gets blocks on the edge. Jackson navigates in for his second touchdown. What a start for the Cardinals. Two possessions, two touchdowns, less than five.
five minutes. Doesn't take much to get them going, right? One play can ignite a drive. Absolutely. And they get the tempo. Well, and Brandon Radcliffe getting yards is setting up the zone read game because 23, the running back, Radcliffe, is catching the attention of the defense. So you're no longer just worried about Lamar Jackson. That time they ran a zone read, and Demarcus Walker, 44, collapses down. You see him there? He's reading it. This is the read right here. He comes down. Now he's confused, opens up. Look at the blocks at the second level. But they collapse down because of the respect that they have for Radcliffe right now, who already he's averaging 15 yards himself see all the white jerseys on Ratcliffe now you're leaving the most dangerous weapon number eight with some blocks on the perimeter all by himself a very familiar spot that they put themselves in the last couple years even against Louisville I was here on a, on a Thursday night two years ago and they were able to fight their way back they put themselves back in that position again they're gonna have to show poise being down 14 Whitfield takes George's kickoff at the four. He's going to have opportunities today because the kickoffs don't typically reach the end zone, and he gets out across the 35 yard. Francois from the pocket finds Rudolph across the middle, and he's got room. Travis Rudolph slips as he cuts back, but gets to the Cardinal 45 yard line. You've got a couple receivers off to the right here. You can see different moves and actually freeze up underneath. Linebacker gets lost with a different route combination. Good job of getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Another high percentage throw by Jimbo Fisher with De DeAndre Francois. And you get it to Rudolph, and he can make you pay for that with some yards after the catch. 21st consecutive game with a reception for Rudolph. Got 17 yards there. Now Cook cuts back. Boy, he is such an explosive jump cutter, isn't he? That's, that's just rare ability. And they go back into the into the boundary there with a couple poles. The center is pulling the left guard. Watch him follow them. He picks up a nice block. A little jump cut. He's you know, the, the great backs, the special backs in college. They have that ability to, to make that jump cut with the vision and not slow down. If anything, accelerate through it. And that's what Cook's able to do. Deep in the eye on second down. Cook gets it again. Bounces it, lowers the head, and we'll have a first down at the 33 before Dejan Richardson stopped him. Second time in a row, there's clearly Jimbo Fisher sees a matchup on that left side that he likes. His best lineman is the left tackle, Johnson, getting a pretty good push. And again, for Jimbo Fisher, if he can get Dalvin Cook going on the ground, it can really put a lot of pressure on this Louisville defense. Their eye discipline will be tested against the play action pass. Francois straight back fires incomplete pressure that Bobo Wilson was the receiver but that was Drew Bailey the junior the junior college transfer off the edge yeah, they, they can get after the quarterback this, this Louisville program they've done a great job in recruiting pass rushers themselves James Hearns who you mentioned earlier Chris the junior out of Tallahassee Devontae Fields who was a great had a great start to his career at TCU had some issues obviously ended up transferring He's now in his last year here at Louisville. He can rush the quarterback. But as you saw, Drew Bailey, also Chris Williams, 44, can get up after it up front as well. That's the importance of establishing the running game with Cook to relieve that pass rush pressure. That time they're all over Dalvin. It's going to be third and long. They are attacking downhill in a hurry with their linebacker play. Their safety's involved. It was amazing. And you look at their... Their, some of their stats in the early going in this season and you look at who's leading them in tackles It's all the linebackers and the safeties. They're very very active in the run game and the defensive lines job on running plays Just occupy those offensive linemen eat up as much space as you can to free those linebackers up if They don't gain yards. It'd be another 50 yard a potential attempt can't afford a sack to stay in field goal range and Francois escapes a short gain to the 30 so Fisher could take another shot if he wants to with the Guayo. A sack would have been disastrous. Yeah, how about Josh Harvey Clemens coming on a very delayed blitz. He waited to the last possible second. He sneaks through. He waited just in time. Everybody is picked up. That's what actually freed up the rest of the defense there to be able to get that pressure. If they'd sacked him there, it would have been a 57-yarder. 
as it is. Aguayo tracks back out for 47 yards. This would be the longest he's made. Had the distance the last time from 50 and knocks it straight through. So the Knowles stop the bleeding a bit, get on the board, but the Cardinals up 11 late first quarter. Our AT&T Inside Access, Kirk, your journey from game day to the booth. Excellent planning and execution. Lead blocking by Darren Brown was exceptional on this. <laughs> kind yeah, of a light actually, jog. The, the team here led by You're Kenley, checking your phone while you're on the golf cart. Security, our security guys <laughs> do a great job. I almost turned it, and my right knee almost blew out there, almost buckled that, but somehow we managed to come up here and join you. With 90 seconds to spare, it was easy. I Easy. thought it was getting much down the, out of the wire. Yeah, we, we got it. We got it done. Corso picked Louisville against his beloved Knowles. Tough pick for him. He said the toughest tough. pick he's ever had. Tough week for him. It's looking good so far. The crowd in here enjoyed that. So Jackson, this was the first game after all the hype. Now he dealt with it in high school, but a different level in college. How would he come out? How would he practice? How would he prepare for his biggest challenge when the, the nation suddenly is all talking about him? Yeah, and I, I asked him from being from the state of Florida, does he know a lot of these guys? And he said he, know, he knows a, a few of them from playing against them. But when you know, he's just hyped, I think, to lead his team in a big game. They go trips to the right, actually motioning out of it now. Leaned off inside in a short game. Ratcliffe's one of those guys from Miami. There are 19 players in the Louisville roster, including 11 starters in the state of Florida. So extra juiced up today against the Knowles, no doubt. But the Cardinals, who started the game fast, finished the first quarter strongly, threatening to add to an 11-point lead in what would be perhaps their biggest regular season victory ever. End of 15 minutes. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Well, Louisville with 14 points in the first quarter. That's half what they've been averaging in the first quarters. 28 in each of the first two games. But Kirk, throwing an 800-yard pace, 194 yards of offense, and threatening again as we begin the second quarter. It's kind of been who they have been these first couple weeks. And it's, again, I keep saying this, it's a 60-minute game. It's a four-quarter game. But they are looking exactly the way they looked in these first two weeks and threatening to put more on the board. And Kirk, the series began in the red zone. Now it's back at the 41, second and 34. Jackson, incomplete, tried to go sidelines over the head of Jamari Staples. It'll be third in a mile. Great play by Pugh started this on first down. Second down, you had the, the penalty along with a, another pressure by Florida State and putting him in, in second down and forever. And then they're able to sit back and just play with cover two, making it very tough for Jackson to find anybody to throw the ball to downfield. Hard to find a good play call on third and 34. They can try to pick up some of the yardage, get closer to field goal range for Evan O'Hara. And they hand it off straight ahead, and that's barreling forward Jeremy Smith, who does get down to the 30 before Pugh knocked him down. So this would be about a 48-yard field goal try. Figured either quarterback draw or a handoff or a quick screen. As you said, Chris, just try to get as many yards back as they can and, and give them a shot here at three points. O'Hara is a sophomore walk on, never kicked in the game before this year. This is right about the range that we had him in pregame. Down a 48 yard attempt. Slight breeze at his back. And it's going to bounce. Off the upright, no good. Had plenty of leg, couldn't quite thread it through. So the sack and the penalty spoils the drive for the Cardinals, and Knowles will take over. Still down 14. All right, Cassidy, thank you. We knows that the uh, the Hurricanes have a 21 nothing lead over Appalachian State. Some figure that might be a serious test for Miami. Jack Quest Patrick is in the game. And Swat is flushed, has plenty of space, and rolls for a first down, slides down at the 45. Samantha? Yeah, Chris, keep an eye on defensive end Drew Bailey during this series. During that last drive, he spent most of the time with athletic trainers, got both hands taped up, but specifically that left hand, two fingers taped together, having a hard time with leverage. Well, Knowles are playing fast, and Patrick in the clear. Jacquez Patrick cuts it back. Big fella rumbling down inside the 20. 
A saving tackle by Stacy Thomas, but Cook's backup makes a huge play. Well, that is a great job of making the safety Chucky Williams miss. And for as big as he is, 230 pounds, watch 22. He's got a chance to make a play. Completely whiffs on him. And then the cutback right there to pick up more yards. Heck of a play there by Patrick. Swap pressure delivers far side and the catch is made by Boba Wilson gets back to the 22. Francois now three of six for just 38 yards. Yeah, and, and a lot of the throws, he's just the, the throws at this point in the game with the momentum and the crowd being on the road, a lot of quick throws, just it, and it kind of minimizes what Jimbo Fisher will call. Now, as the game progresses, they'll have more opportunities downfield. Second and 17, Cardinals bring pressure, but Cook tests the left side. Very short gain, and now a third and 15 coming up. How about that push up front from that defensive line? Linebackers, as I said, when number four gets the ball, they're already right up there at the line of scrimmage, too. And talked about that penalty, the momentum that was created there by Patrick's run, and then almost negated, negated by the, the penalty there on the chop block. Took away not only yards, but momentum. It was big D'Angelo Brown, the nose tackle, waving a finger in the air after that stop. He's a guy with the mean look out there. Empty backfield on third and 15. Crowd making it tough. Just get the snap away. Francois fires. Slant. Touchdown. Auden Tate with his first career touchdown catch. The big target in that receiving core. Well, they do a great job of picking up fields on the blitz here by Johnson, and then they're just going to go vertical, and they just have one too many out there. The safety's occupied by 15, Rudolph over the middle, and he has to put that ball right on a line, just like that. How about the throw by DeAndre Francois? Great recognition of the open man in Tate. With Rudolph in the middle to occupy the safety, he makes a heck of a read and a great throw. Tate at six foot five is that big target they've been seeking. They have a bunch of fast guys, but smallish receivers, and they want Tate as he gains understanding of the offense to be a big weapon in the red zone. Watch the left tackle, goes to the outside, does a good job, picks up the blitz, quick recognition of the open man, and puts it on a line where only his man can make a play on it. Our Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week. And the Seminoles move it 69 yards, five plays, 224, their first touchdown. And Swan to Auden Tate, they overcome the penalty in the first and 25 to get into the end zone. Tyler kicking into that 15 mile per hour wind cannot reach the end zone. And Samuels knocked down short. Jackson. Keeps it. Explodes around the edge. Such a gifted ball handler. Fools defenses so often. And this is what makes it so tough on the Marcus Walker. Zone read. Again, he collapses down. Makes it very easy for the quarterback. Watch the blocks at that second level on the linebackers and safeties. And he puts, he has such acceleration when he puts his foot in the ground and makes a decision. Great read again and putting constant pressure on the most talented Knowles defender, Demarcus Walker. Cardinals need five on this third down. Now with just a four-point lead and a strike thrown. Quick shakes a tackle. And James Quick ducks down inside the 30. The senior from here in Louisville. Highest star rating of any recruit ever in this program. How, how about the poise from Lamar Jackson on third down? Comfortably sitting in the pocket and throws an absolute laser. The two slants underneath occupied the underneath coverage and opened up the back end throw. No pressure at all. He just sits in there, holds his ground, and throws it right on the money. Bradford breaking more tackles. Showing his strength. He's lost 10 pounds to get a little bit quicker this year, but still a strong runner. Guy out of Miami of Florida, the captain of the team, one of the hardest working players on this football team. Helps set the tone. Took a step back last year, had better stats his sophomore year, but sets himself up, reclaimed the starter's role. As you said, he's a two-year captain. And off to a good start. 72 yards rushing already, more than 10 yards a carry. Quarterback keeps it this time. Jackson, just so slippery. Darts down near the 11. It's another first down. 
He actually misread this and then made the guy who he misread again miss on the tackle, just like the touchdown. Watch 16 Pew. He's making this is his read right here. Watch this. He doesn't come down. He stays out of the quarterback and he still makes him miss and picks up the first down. He's made hundreds of guys miss over the years and going to make hundreds more before he's done. Look at the ball fake there. Jackson rolling out, gets a block on the edge and leaps out of bounds at the two-yard line. And that was Hickatini kind of riding his man as an escort on the edge over there. Yeah, Hickatini's like, just follow me. Just follow me. I got this linebacker. Just keep coming with me. So we got a Noel player down. It's actually Thomas who was with Hickatini. He's their fastest defender and has such a big role today. We see Kirk Jackson show such suddenness, such quickness, but then when he's in the open field, long legs, he just glides, doesn't he? Gobbles up turf. Absolutely. Watch this block at the end. See if it's, there he is right there, a little kind of a cut block. Thomas got caught up there. He shows the quickness that this became a viral sensation, just jumping over a Syracuse defender. He did the same thing in high school, and that's why it was a kind of a, a YouTube sensation at Boynton Beach High. To do it in college is different, though. <laughs> Barreling straight ahead is Jeremy Smith. Touchdown, Louisville. With the focus on the quarterback, they feed the junior tailback and stretch the lead again. It's a heck of a block by the fullback. Atkins leads the way here. Watch that collision right there. He just pushes Patty, the linebacker, back. And then that great effort by Smith with the help of the offensive line. Of course, that's no longer a penalty. If you have a back that's working like that, they can push him from behind into the end zone. O'Hara knocks it through. And Louisville, as the sun shines brightly, back up 21-10. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a flag down, kick one out of bounds. Bogan spotted at the 35-yard line. Taking in the James Winston roll. Cook, fumble! Bad exchange, Louisville's got it! Jair Alexander came off the corner. And so much for the pep talk. The Cardinals are in business. Yeah, and this is just, it, actually the blitz is from Alexander. He's able to pounce on the ball, but this is just a mistake by the quarterback and Dalvin Cook. Just the ball handling. I, you know, I don't, Dalvin Cook's coming through to, for a fake, and I don't know if Francois put it in there. It hits the elbow. He's looking to his right and not looking to put the ball into the, the stomach of Dalvin Cook. They had some problems this year with that. Yeah. Remember his very first college play involved a fumble, a turnover recovered by Ole Miss. So a miscue in the backfield, and the blitz happened to be perfect timing for Louisville with Alexander there coming in on that blitz. He was able to get on the football. First turnover of the game sets the Cardinals up just outside the red zone. Radcliffe knocked down there. Floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee so far, this Louisville team. Ratcliffe a physical compliment to the quick quarterback. Yeah, Ratcliffe is stinging like a bee, and, and Lamar Jackson is floating like a butterfly right now. They're a great combination in that backfield. Threatening to make this an 18-point lead with halftime approaching. Steps left. Darts right and is dragged down inside the five. That was Roderick Hoskins making a nice tackle on the quarterback. It'll be third down. Actually a really good play there by Hoskins to prevent prevent the touchdown. I, I thought Jackson may pitch that as Hoskins was coming in. It's a big third down here to this Florida State defense to try to keep the Cardinals out of the end zone. Third and three. Huge play here. And Jackson from the pocket flips it over the middle wide open for a touchdown is Jalen Smith As the Seminoles lost the receiver in traffic and Jackson With a touchdown pass to go with his two touchdown runs Nice ball play by Petrino after the timeout
Taking advantage of an opportunity there. Smith, the sophomore from Pascagoula, Mississippi. First touchdown of the season. Let's go back to how that drive was set up. DeAndre Francois' eyes aren't even on Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook runs into him, balls on the ground. It's picked up by the blitzing corner, Alexander. Jimbo Fisher trying to calm down his quarterback. What are you doing here now? Let's go. We got to make adjustments. We got to come back. You go back to the touchdown. Miscommunication again by the corner here. McFadden, watch what he does here in coverage. It's a pretty simple route, but you have two Florida State defenders picking up one guy, and he gets underneath. Nobody picks him up. Another miscommunication between the secondary, the back end between a corner and a safety. Nobody picked up the receiver underneath. Easy read and an easy touchdown there for Jalen Smith. And that, that's what Jimbo Fisher is trying to make sure his uh, young quarterback is ready to do. It reminds us also of the game two years ago between these two teams. Good field at the goal line, knocked down short of the 20. Look to Cook. Good pursuit. He's knocked down. I thought Samantha's report was interesting about Francois being animated, being energized, trying to fire his team up. That's not really his natural personality. So you wonder about that. The next play goes out in the fumble. Yeah, from what we've seen of him in his early part of his career, th three games in, he doesn't seem to be that kind of guy. Uh, she said he was almost to a point where he was too amped up, and then he comes back out, and next play, the ball's on the ground. And second and eight, completion delivered. It's a first down across the 30. It's Nyquan Murray. Should mention that all these Florida State comebacks, there's a reason why that happens. And there's it, it's adjustments from Jimbo Fisher, but it's the players, and they don't panic. Right now, it'd be easy to panic on the road, down 18. Oh, my gosh, game slipping away from us. These Florida State teams, they do not panic. Cook. That's the edge, knocked down near the 40 by James Hearns. The reason that's important is when you don't panic, it allows you to just simply execute, just work it one drive at a time. And, and that's the one common theme all these comebacks from Florida State have is, is their attitude. They, they don't try to force a play or try to create a play. They just kind of continue to let the game come to them. And, and I think that poise along with the adjustments from Jimbo Fisher, the reasons they're able to do it so often. Brown trying to make it tough. Francois from the pocket now breaks down and is dropped for a short loss at the 40. Angela Brown comes out with the football, but it's no fumble. Big man in the middle making a push. Uh, they're able to get pressure with four, and a, and a big reason for that is a great coverage. The Knowles had nowhere to go with the ball. Receiver right here, another receiver right here. Watch them take everybody away. And Francois looking to try to get the ball off to his right, has to bail on it because of the coverage downfield. So they need 12 on this big third down play. Five receiver look. A stop here on the Cardinals to get the ball back. He's got one on one at the top. He's got to look to his left here. Instead, he's flushed immediately in sacks. Devontae Fields trying to make a big push in his senior year with all the scouts watching today got to the quarterback with a blitz from the inside by Keith Kelsey right here brings the right tackle Leonard down and it frees up a great pass rusher for Louisville nobody there to pick up Devontae Fields but it was the blitz on the inside from Kelsey that brought the tackle down nobody in the backfield no running backs cleared made a clear path that time for Devontae Fields See what kind of field possession they get after the punt from Tyler. It's a low boot. It's going to bounce at the 43 and work out pretty well as it goes dead inside the 30 yard line. So, a minute 17 to go for Louisville and now one timeout to work with. As Jackson does take a shot, complete. Quicks got it out to the 45 yard line and now the Cardinals are in business. They can get the tempo going. Yeah, they have one timeout left. As I said, the, the, you, you got a quarterback playing with as much confidence, as much big playability as Lamar Jackson. You get this ball back, 18 isn't enough. You want to keep trying to move down the field, at least get in field goal range. 
And the pocket again delivers a strike, and this is Picatini has been an effective blocker in the first half, takes it into Knowles territory. And, and, and you're looking right now at the area Lamar Jackson has improved the most from where he was a year ago, where he, he admitted to us, sometimes I wouldn't even know what down it was. The game was moving so fast, but through repetition and, and experience and making good plays and really dedicating himself to the pass game, he's a different guy. On second one, delivers from the pocket. Left arm, a shoulder, and his two legs. Lee Mr. Corso Corso is right does. there. Watch McFadden. He's in great position. He jumps on the route, uses the knees in the end zone. Jackson rolls out and just waltzes into the end zone. A hat trick of rushing touchdowns in the first half to go with a touchdown pass. And the Cardinals are rolling to halftime with a huge lead. I mean, you, you roll him to the right, and even if everybody's covered, <laughs> the best option is him running the ball. And he knew when he turned the, turned that corner, there was nobody even close to stopping him. So there was no threat of getting stopped short, and then the clock continuing. you got to be pretty confident, though, in your quarterback and your running game to call that, don't you? Because if he did get stopped short, a field goal would have been a rush. Instead... Louisville tacks on another touchdown. 375 yards total offense for the Cardinals to lead by 25 at halftime. Sam Ponder will speak with Jimbo Fisher right after these messages. Coach, you've seen a slow start before, but in your mind, what's going on with your defense right now? I don't know. we got to get to live violation to get to leverage. Like during the last play, we went under a block. We should have come over the top. We'll look at it and see. But it was really in good shape. We were 14 to 10, and we gave up a long third down. They hit a third and long pass and got it, and we went out and fumbled it. We went the wrong way on a pass we had exactly what we wanted to go against and had a good look but that's ball we got to we, we lost our poise a little bit got to regroup them get back try to come out get some points and then play this game the second half coach before that fumble when deandre was coming out on the field he was fired up coach. as excited as can be so so how do you handle that type of discouragement with a young guy in this environment well i just you keep your poise he was until then he was playing super and he was playing really good after that he had the one he had the one major issue right there but you know when you're a quarterback in a game like this that becomes big but at the same time i still like where he's at he's seeing everything he made all the calls could come over and tell me everything was going on. he made some nice plays when we protect we had, we had some shots early open we didn't protect so he's got to do a better job I'll let you get in there thanks Thank coach Cardinals in front of a frenzied crowd here at their home stadium trying to make a huge statement beat a number two ranked team for the first time in history never beaten a one or a two of 25 at halftime and ally Brank bringing you to halftime stats Kirk and they are impressive on the Louisville side I mean look look at the production huge five of seven on third down they've had three touchdowns on third down plays and, and it's been a really a, 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 the entire group has done a great job we're talking a lot about Lamar Jackson but his receivers have made plays after the catch. Bre uh, Brandon Gratcliffe's running the football. The offensive line's done a good job. And I think the Knowles have been confused in the first half and on their heels. That was the two things they needed to avoid if they wanted to try to slow down this Louisville offense. And yeah, we'll get the ball to begin this third quarter and see if they can begin a, a patented comeback. Diving up to make the catch at the 17-yard line is Whitfield. So not very good field position for Francois. Yeah. Cook. Not much. Still spiting, breaking tackles. Dalvin Cook running hard, and that's going to be an emphasis for this defense, which did not tackle well in the second half of their losses the last couple of years. Sam? Yeah, Chris, as you know, Bobby Petrino been in this position before. I talked to him about his concerns coming out of the half, and he said, I just wanted my team to feel like it's 0 0. Doesn't want them looking at the score. So I asked him how it's going to affect play calling to be up with this kind of lead 25 points, and he said, We have to. To stay aggressive, not going to get conservative. At least, at least for now, guys. We'll see if that changes as things go on. It's interesting to hear that. It is an interesting approach with the background of having the lead on the Knolls the last two years. They played them in the second half, the big lead two years ago in 14, right here in this stadium. And he, he, his the message he gave Sam and you, myself and our crew in the meeting, because we brought up, what if you were up at half? What do you do? And he said, you know, just like he told Sam, we're going to keep being aggressive. Francois. 
flushed, rolls, and just has to throw it away. The pass rush from the very first possession has been effective for the Cardinals today. That and just being dialed in, Jimbo Fisher trying to flood it, uh, the uh, zone to the right, and there's just nobody open. Everybody covered. They rushed four, dropped seven back in coverage, took away the underneath routes. Francois, all he could do was just throw it away before he got sacked. So in this crucial possession, Kirk, right away they need five on third down. 2 of 6 in the first half on third down. Right here's where the pressure can come from in Devontae Fields. Fields tracks him down, doesn't get near the quarterback. Came out of his hand funny, and James Hearns, the pass rusher who dropped in the coverage, should have had a pick. Yeah, and I wonder, I think the linebacker, Stacy Thomas, 32, watch him right here. I think he might got it. He might have gotten a hand on the ball when he came back right there. He did. His left hand deflected that football, jumps up right in time. Yep, knocks the ball away. And well, that would have been a heck of an interception by the outside linebacker, James Hearns. But a great play by the Stacy Thomas there in the middle to get a hand on the ball. Earns the Tallahassee native had an early sack almost to pick there and the Knowles go three and out on that crucial possession. Tyler gets a good boot away with the wind at his back. And chases Alexander back deep but he's got some running room. Look out into the secondary off and running and Louisville with a special teams touchdown pads the lead. Jair Alexander 69 yards. And this stadium is unhinged now. The sophomore from Charlotte joins the party. And Louisville, a PAT away from a 32-point lead. Tackle he had to break was the punter. Chris, what an amazing block here. Right here by 24. Cannon, a safety on special teams. And you and I marveled at the effort from Louisville in practice on Thursday. Every time a player got a hands on, on a football, they go 70, 80 yards practicing that over and over for opportunities like this right here. Football playoff national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. It was up at Nippert Stadium where number six Houston had to rally against the Bearcats on Thursday night. All of a sudden, the hype for the playoff will begin to mount in Louisville with this performance today. Getting everybody's attention. If you didn't already pay attention to Cardinals. Whitfield from the 10, knocked down to the 30. Cook puts it back, hit hard after about a four yard gain there. Harvey Clemens, rangy safety who can hit, does so there. Georgia transfer, he is rangy, tall, athletic, and explosive as you see right there. Boy, that is textbook tackle there by the safety. And they, they've been hearing about it all week, even with the lead. Their coach told Sam it's zero to zero at halftime. Do not let up. Play action, Francois rolling. Looks far side, it's incomplete. Mike Juan Murray was pretty well covered. It's going to be third down. Louisville's offense, obviously, is the headline so far, Kirk, with those 375 yards in the first half. But the defense only allowed an almost 150. They've limited Dalvin Cook, and they have frustrated Francois, who's 5 of 12, for only 70 yards passing. Yeah, other than, than Patrick, who got out on a pretty good run, everything else, they've done a great job of bottling up the running game and putting it all on the shoulders of Francois. And how about the coverage? There have been many times Francois is holding on to the football because of the great coverage downfield, and, and they've ended up having some sacks because of that. Good point. Good coverage, good pass rush. Good combination. Tough to move. <laughs> From the pocket, Francois now escapes, scrambling, will not get first down yardage. He'll be hit four yards short 
Alexander who brought the punt back there on the stop. You heard Kimbo Fisher say to Sam Ponder walking off, his defense has to do a better job of leveraging the football on defense against against Lamar Jackson. That's exactly what Louisville does when De DeAndre Francois takes off on a scramble. There's three different jerseys right there and nowhere for him to try to make a move and get around one defender. There's just too many defenders there. And Todd Grantham's defense, the veteran coordinator who was at Georgia, four different NFL teams, back here at Louisville for a third year. Terrific performance by that group so far, forcing the Knolls to 2 3 and ounce to begin the second half. Handoff on the end around. This is Samuel, and the quick little slot receiver makes a nice first down game. Samantha? Interesting moment on the FSU bench. Jimbo Fisher just sent away all the documentary cameras, grabbed his guys in close. I couldn't make out everything, but he was kind of sensing the same thing I'm sensing. No more juice on the sideline. One thing I did hear him say was, Who are you going to be right now? Guys, we saw the momentum shift in that Ole Miss game, and he's looking for a big shift now, and it's getting late. And Sam Showtime is following the Noel. An all access series this year. Radcliffe breaking some tackles, banging across midfield. Walker stopped him. Could be an interesting episode in that series. I almost think they have the football. They're lobbying for a fumble call. Uh, he he get it. Yeah, he was down and he is having a heck of a game himself. Keep talking about Brandon Radcliffe. With the leg drive there, pulling out arm tackles. He is a physical, low center gravity type of back. Ten carries now, 88 yards on the game. Pretty good average when you're averaging almost nine yards a carry against this Knowles defense. Cardinals figure to have two different 100-yard rushers today. Jackson's got 97 on the ground on 15 carries. Quarterback in the pocket. Delivers over the middle. High throw caught by Nicotini. A flag is down. They move it inside the 30, but the flag was down near the O-line pit. I think it might be a hands in the face on Florida State. Derek Noddy got his hands up into the offensive lineman there. Personal foul. Retaining his hands to the face. First down. Dave Kataya, rules expert. We're seeing a lot of calls on this penalty so far this season, Dave. A point of emphasis? It always has been because it's contact with the helmet, but what we're looking for is, a, is continuous contact or delivering a blow. Continuous contact was there. He was driving him back into the, into the exactly. backfield. Exactly. Now you tap, look at this. It's the 15 yards yeah. on the back end of it. The play made it to the 28. They tack on the 15, and the Cardinals inside the Knowles 15. This is fitting to get real ugly. Hopeful Jackson do next. I can't wait to see. He's done everything. Throwing and running. That time he hands it off and Radcliffe long way around the right end gets down inside the five it'll be first and goal but they, they just cannot set the edge to this defense this time pew 16 he's been set the edge get upfield to prevent radcliffe from being able to bounce that ball to the outside finally the secondary gets involved lewis gets involved but not until it's another first down florida state the entire afternoon against this run not doing a good job of setting the edge and letting the, the rest of the pursuit of that defense get there. On first and goal, Jackson keeps it. He is swung down short of the goal line by Walker. They've been extremely, extremely productive in the red zone today. Six red zone touchdowns, or five out of six, I should say, on trips. With his threat of running the ball and, and throwing the ball, Boy, Bobby Petrino's come up with a really nice package inside the red zone that takes advantage of that and puts so much on a defense to have to defend. Here comes a late Florida State defender running onto the field. And they hand it to Smith, who runs the other way and just waltzes in for another easy touchdown. Louisville making a resounding statement to the nation, and the Knowles are being embarrassed. I can't remember a Florida State team looking like this, not only just getting beaten down 49 to 10 with a whole quarter to go, 
but the attitude, the energy, reminds me of Marcus Mariota in Oregon in the Rose Bowl. That kind of feel in the second half and the way that game got out of hand. But it's one thing to lose. It's another thing to just not be sound and not get lined up and not make plays. Yeah, the margin of the Rose Bowl was 39. That is the margin right now in Louisville. It's, as you said, 20 minutes to go. It's a party in Louisville. Cardinals 49-10. Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week. Early to be talking about national championships, but Louisville will believe that they belong very much in that conversation. And you think the Clemson Tigers are paying close attention to what's going on here. Whitfield inside the five. Hit hard, knocked down short of the 20. Chased again, dropped again. Jonathan Greenard in on the axe. It's a field day for all of these Louisville pass rushers. Uh, again, it's the right tackle, Rick Leonard. Watch him off to the right here, and watch Cook try to come over to try to help. Watch the right tackle. He sets up to the inside, and he doesn't have any chance at all against that speed coming from the outside from Greener. Watching tape, we were wondering, how would the Louisville offensive line hold up against the Knowles front? It's been the opposite problem today. Florida State's offensive line badly exposed here. Greener again in on the stop. Remember we talked about holding the edge? Holding the edge? This is how you hold the edge and let your rest of your defense be able to get there and rally. When you hold the edge to the outside like that, the rest of the defense can come in and make a play. It's a great job there of not letting Cook get to the outside again by Greenard. Lee Corsa, by the way, of course, who was a star quarterback, the Sunshine Scooter at Florida State. He's on the Knowles sideline, but he picked Louisville, the school that first gave him a chance to be a head coach after he was an assistant. So he put on the Cardinal head on game day. This place went crazy. He said it was a tough pick, but he's over on the Knowles sideline after making that pick. And yeah. again, hands on hips oh, like yeah. he's coaching uh, the he's game. Like he's coaching. Mm -hmm. Mixed emotions yeah. for, for the Sunshine Scooter. You, you can almost see that he, in his face. He told me in, in our meetings, hey, this, this has been a tough one for him because obviously loves Florida State playing there and coached there and being a head coach here at Louisville. Look the, at the jet black hair back in the day. Jet black and the long sideburns. He had some great teams here, some great defenses. Tommy Jackson, one of the great players to ever play for Louisville, was recruited by Lee Corso and coached by Lee Corso. They led the nation in scoring defense in 1972. Guys, you're talking Tom about Jim. you're talking about Corso on the sideline, and yeah, he, he's been over on the Florida State sideline a little bit, but you know how he is. He's been running oh, yeah. the entire perimeter. I can't keep up with I'm the man. Telling you, and Sam. I really mean that. No, he should have entered a speed walking contest <laughs> years <laughs> yes. ago. He would There's beat still time. anybody in that. Some great names in that old Corso team. Elmer Lee, Elijah Craig, Evan Williams. Basil Hayden. Big names in Kentucky history. Yeah. Those are bourbons, by the way, not, not ex Corso players. Uh, uh, like, yeah. I was about to say, I, I, that's, that's, that's next level there. I'm starting to get thirsty here, a 39 point game in the third quarter. Pat, is Pappy on there, too? <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Pappy. Steve Gampton. Okay, hitting off inside Cook, a short gain on third and really long. Drew Bailey on the stop. And this this Louisville defense starting to flex a little bit. They they feel, I think, Kirk, that they're making a very individual statement. Jackson gets all the high high scoring offense. We knew that coming in, but this performance by this group today ought to wake up a lot of people about how good they are on that side of the ball. Without a doubt, and they have played. We we keep talking about it because they keep playing so well. But I, I, I walk away from this just as impressed with the defense as I am with Lamar Jackson in the offense. Alexander, who's had the two long pump returns, not back there. Reggie Bonifant is a high snap grabbed by Tyler. And a fair catch made by Bonifant inside of the 30-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. Instead of staging a furious comeback, the Seminoles fall farther behind. And the Louisville Cardinals, one of the great days in the history of this football program, are romping with 15 minutes to play. The 
party continues here. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Shocking scoreline. Whether or not you believe Florida State was a deserving number two, had a huge win over Ole Miss in the opener, figures to vault right up in the conversation of the top teams in the country after this performance here. <laughs> Jackson, look out! Makes a cut. Why not spin in for another touchdown? Unbelievable. He has seized this national stage and made a strong early, early Heisman statement. You know how everybody has a kind of a Heisman play that you see the highlights over and over and over again? They sense it, I think, right there. Yeah. Look at that. What an exclamation point for him today. And against the Knowles defense, this isn't Syracuse, that's Florida State's defense. He just walked right through. 47-yard scamper for the quarterback. He's now run for four, thrown for one. Another monster total offense game. Five straight 100-yard rushing games. There's a flag on the PAT. We'll check that after we come back. But Lamar Jackson spinning and twisting to six more. Another look at the touchdown. Yeah, th th this is something he does so often. You're going to have motion here. He's going to ride this, and he's actually reading the flow of the defense right here. Watch how they flow. He just kind of senses this and feels that they're staying with the back, both these defenders, so then it's going to create an opening. Watch the offensive line, the effort to get down and take those linebackers out. As I said earlier, if you take the linebackers away on this play and you get him up against the secondary, it's a mismatch. There are very few people, if anybody, it would be interesting to see as the season goes on. They can tackle him in the open field. Already his eighth career 100-yard game. It's almost every single start of his career. Chuck plays Patrick in for Cook. He's it testing the right side and gain that to the 35-yard line. A little look ahead of the Michigan State game. Perhaps for Wisconsin could be very costly. Yeah. yeah. Patrick again. And as the Knowles just kind of keep it on the ground here. Early fourth quarter down 46. I think potentially could get chippy here in this fourth quarter. Be very smart for Louisville to try to be above it. You know, if, if it goes that route, just keep playing the way they have the last three quarters, which is hard-nosed football, but not making mental mistakes, not being potentially pulled in that direction. Right now, Florida State is a frustrated football team, a defeated football team. Francois intercepted, thrown right into the hands. And Chucky Williams down inside the 10 as the frustration continues. Quarterback threw it right to him. Williams is down at the five after the return. Cardinals threatening to make it even uglier. Boy, what an amazing job here by Chucky Williams. He's adjusting to the motion. He just reads the quarterback's eyes. Sits there, he's matched up man for man. Look at the break on the ball, and Francois was expecting Izzo to continue to the outside, and he just kind of settled. He turned and, and anticipated the ball on his outside shoulder, and Francois threw it like he was going to cut to the outside. And because of Williams' ability to see the ball being thrown and break on the ball, just an easy interception. Naquan Murray, the receiver, got back to save the touchdown with good hustle on the tackle. He's down at the 10-yard line. Check the injury there. Cardinals in business at the 10-yard line after the interception by Chucky Williams, who was helped off, looked to be a problem in his left shoulder area. He's being examined on the sidelines. But that pick sets up the Cardinals here and a chance to get over 60 points. And Florida State has never given up 60-plus in school history FYI there's a lot of time to go and it's Radcliffe in the eye formation he's got it straight ahead moving the pile no signal yes touchdown now 
huge against the defensive line that has surrendered. Louisville again just wanted it more. Boy, Brandon Radcliffe is such a great compliment to Lamar Jackson with his power and how tough he is to bring down. The Knowles have him at the two-yard line, but he keeps his legs moving, and those linemen do a good job of pushing him across. He's easily into the end zone for a touchdown, and I cannot believe that Florida State has given up 63 points today. Never had before, as we said. We've got a lot of time to go. Boy, this is a, a sweet party for all the folks in red here. Francois Poulter now, J.J. Cosentino, the sophomore, not Sean McGuire, the veteran who's healthy coming in. He, he was in mop-up duty a week ago, which raised some eyebrows. We were told that, that McGuire, you know, that foot injury in camp was, was good to go, but it's Cosentino who gets the mop-ups. Yeah, maybe because the score is, is so far. I, I just, I, I feel like when you watch games in September, whether you're winning 63 to 10 or you're losing 63 to 10, you can see a lot about a team's character and their heart. And Louisville, you would think, would just let up. This layoff, relax, you're, you're blowing them out. They're playing harder right now than they've played all game. Cosentino loses the ball. Cardinals pounce on it. And now they're going to rule incomplete. Kelsey was there in a pressure. Louisville thinks they got the ball. Incomplete was the signal. Let's see if his arm was coming forward. Well, he threw it with the left hand, like a almost like a pitch. I mean, an orthodox pass to a, say the least. Yeah. But it was the arm moving forward. That's a two-handed. That's out of the movie Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. Flip it, flip it, snap it, snap it. Jimmy Chitwood out here. Argentino. The flag comes in. The receiver was just grabbed on the way by. It used to be defensive holding. That's a good question, Kirk. Holding defense on 15, 21 penalty. First down. It's a brand new experience. Yes, they lost the Rose Bowl to Oregon, but that was a playoff, and that was a while ago. It's a brand new experience for all of these guys to get humiliated like this. Most points ever given up in school history. Give up seven rushing touchdowns. This would be, if it stands, the largest margin of defeat in Florida State history. Patrick, he's still running hard. He's had a good afternoon. One of the few bright spots. Leah Spann is proud to support college football's celebration of educators across the country through the Extra Yard for Teachers initiative created by the College Football Playoff Foundation. To learn more, visit cfpfoundation.org. Turned off inside to Ryan Green. And back up tail back the fourth stringer gets a touch Alexander dropped him some of the defensive starters for the Cardinals still out there Green comes in and shows a little bit of an attitude in the way he ran that football not seen it's one thing that's been a little bit frustrating to me is who's the alpha on the Florida State football team I think they have some on defense especially Demarcus Walker who, who if I said to you who's the leader of the offense who would you say Green again in the open field and shoved out. I mean, usually Travis you have an Rudolph offensive lineman, but, but it's hard for a receiver to be a leader. And, and Dalvin Cook is more of a, a leader by example. Yeah. But when, when things get down, you need somebody besides Jimbo Fisher to kind of be in the face of guys and challenge them. You know, Jameis Winston was so good at that. He even did it at halftime in the Ole Miss. Yeah, he was exceptional. It's, it's a lot yeah. to ask of a young player. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But game, you right? need someone else, yeah. a lineman, a tight end. A, I don't really see that right now in this team. Green knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. And the leadership's going to be important. This is a quarterback that's just not used to losing, much less by 53. Run a success in high school. It's all pretty easy. You sit and you learn 
as an apprentice, come out and play very well in your hometown against Ole Miss. That that magical second half comeback. But from the start today, frustrated, not well protected. Argentina throwing for the end zone, a high throw. Tate goes up for it and makes a catch. His second touchdown reception of the game. He went up over Alexander. That's a heck of an effort there. And Jimbo Fisher told us this week that Tate, who had a great camp, is coming on to be that red zone threat. He had a touchdown reception earlier in the game. How about the focus there? He got annihilated by D. Smith, but held on to the football. 6-5, he goes up, makes the play. But boy, the, the toughness there to hold on to that football. That's a heck of a reception. They've been hoping that he'd break out. I'd be very surprised if Tate didn't have a fine sophomore season because of, of that skill set, strong hands, long arms, and, and that, that big body. Well, that, look, that's tough to defend, even if Alexander knew where the ball was. Turn at the goal line and fighting out across the 16 yard line. Although, although the Bison are out there, North Dakota State, we'll hold on, but still, I mean, Louisville, what a, what a statement that they made today. Malik Williams, Jr., gets a carry on third and two. Stopped short on the first half. Trey Smith, a lot of different guys getting carries. You know, Petrino has a very good ability for getting guys who've had problems, sometimes serious problems, elsewhere, who've been labeled with negative labels by coaches to come here and kind of seize this last opportunity. What, what do you say? It's like officer and a gentleman? Yeah. You have nowhere else to go. Right. Mayonnaise. You have to make the most of your chance here, whether it's junior college transfers, transfers from other schools, fields, Harvey Clemens, guys like that. They come here and he's able to get the best out of them. And for some reason, Louisville's a program where they, they do tend to, to seize that opportunity and move on. Yeah, they, they really have done a good job of bringing guys in and giving them that opportunity. And I think it's a pretty good message, though, if you tell a guy, this is it. I mean, it, we're going to give you a chance, but if you don't take advantage of it, you're done. You know, so all these dreams that you've had, this is, this is where you're going to have to try to make those dreams happen. Cosentino, another downfield shot. And it's intended for Keith Gavin, a true freshman incomplete. The next challenge for Bobby Petrino, just watching him down there. Now, now this program, now it's going to go in the other direction. It's not how they do against a team like Florida State. Now it's, oh, you guys, you're the best team in the country. You know, the only game you have left, you, know, you just got to get ready for Clemson. Now how do they handle success? How do they handle people patting them on the back? How do they handle Lamar Jackson should win the Heisman? All that kind of talk on all the local shows, all the national shows. Absolutely. Now they got to be able to block out the noise and keep playing with the edge and the and a chip on the shoulder that they have. Can they do that? Will be a question. Vickers miles for a first down. Because a big part of their identity is playing nasty, is playing with a chip on their shoulder. And the second that they lose that, they become vulnerable. So he's going to do everything in his power, he and his staff, to try to get them to not listen, don't listen to all the compliments. Well, that's hard to do. Isn't I know. It? Social I know. media. It's also hard to play nasty with an edge for 12 games. Isn't it? Sure. You have those games yeah. where you're flat. Well, that, well, that's where Lamar Jackson that could be an X factor for you. Those days where you are a little flat, he's still going to make plays. Vickers breaking free for Florida State. They try to tack on a couple touchdowns to make it slightly more respectable. D. Smith forced him out. You know, mention the game at Marshall. Never easy to play there. You know, for Marshall, when they see this result, they're going to play like it's their Super Bowl. Everybody And they have beaten them, again, going back to yep. the 80s, it doesn't necessarily apply to this one, but they have beaten them four times in yep. a row. Vickers, this time, dropped back at the 10-yard line. It'll be second in goal from there. Yeah, Bobby Petrino clearly sending a message at halftime to come out at halftime ready to play and they dominated the third quarter they, they wanted 14 to nothing already with that big lead to be the first loss in the August or September game for the Knowles after 18 in a row you see Jurich the athletic director with a smiling Petrino top to bottom Louisville's athletic de pro, uh, department <laughs> they've really taken it to a different level under his guidance as in Tino high throw for the end zone again looking for Keith Gavin again incomplete 
It'll be third and goal. Who do you got tonight, Chris? You got Ohio State playing uh, in a big game against Oklahoma. I can't wait to, to get home, put the feet up. A rare ability to send a watch all those games on a Saturday night. Bounce between Real, Buckeyes, fast. Sooners. Ole Miss, Alabama. Who do you got? You know I don't make picks. Come on, I Alabama. Man. I got Alabama. Ohio State, Oklahoma. I'll go, I'll go Buckeyes narrow on the run. I agree. They got to stop the running game of Smudgy P. Right. Don't, make me, a, don't make me a picker. You're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a talk show, I thought. Open up the phone line, he said. Way over the head. Benny yeah. Ward's got the Irish tonight. Who do you who do you have in the uh, Notre Dame Michigan State game? I'm gonna go Irish to, to bounce back. Irish back yeah. home. Okay. I like Deshaun Kaiser. I think that's a lower scoring game, but I think Michigan. Buddy State. Mike Tirico calling that game. Oh yeah, that's right. Texas. He was doing his prep. I hope he gets a little closer one. Yeah, that'd be good. Did you, did you in your wildest good. imagination? No. Think this a 46 point game as Aguayo tries to chip into that lead here. This from 33 yards in the final minute. And he drives it through. How will this young man handle it? You said, I think mean, it's a, such an important question going forward. They'll do their best to keep him grounded. But it's so difficult in the modern era, a young guy, to not get caught up in it. Seems like a humble guy to me, from, you know, from, from being around him, from watching him at practice. I could not believe how hard he works at practice because there's a lot of quarterback runs in their practices. He's ripping a 50 yard run full sprint the way he did through the Florida State defense and then sprinting right back 50 yards the other way to call the next play. I mean, usually, okay, the second team goes, no, the first unit's still out there and he's sprinting back and forth and back and forth. And I, they said because of how hard he practices, his teammates really love him and appreciate him. So I, I think he'll. Between Bobby Petrino's style and, and his personality, I think he'll, I think he will stay grounded. I think they've got this down. I mean, it's Bowman who has the honors here. This time, no lead against the Knolls slipping away. They started fast and furious, built a huge lead, and then kept it rolling in a dominant third quarter. Took their foot off the gas a little bit, or they could have had even more than 531 yards total offense. But defensively, defensively, keeping the Knolls under 300 yards, limiting Dalvin Cook to 54, and Francois to 101 passing yards. Great group effort. Lamar Jackson will get a lot of attention, but we talked. It was the offense. The group around Lamar Jackson, the defense, and the special teams. Team effort today. Bobby Petrino had him ready to go. You know, two when they beat the Knolls in overtime, they, they stormed the field, ripped down the goalposts. More restrained reaction today. This fan base no longer surprised by success. And let's get down to get Bobby Petrino's reaction to this game with Sam. <laughs> No one's ever done it. 63 points on the Knolls. What is the significance of this one for you? It's just a great team win. Played great defense, special teams made plays, offense made plays. I can't be more proud of the entire team. But your defense was playing angry in the fourth quarter with that type of lead. What enabled them to play the way they did tonight? You know, we got all guys, a lot of guys over there with pride. And we wanted to come back and really have a great game this week. They were flying around, tackled really well, and did a great job of pressuring the quarterback. Coach, I know it's only week three. It's early, and you're a coach. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. But how good do you think this team is? We're going to find out. Let's talk about your quarterback, special guy. What makes him so special, especially on this stage, to have that kind of poise? Yeah, he's pretty amazing. He's a great competitor. He did a great job throwing the ball. And he knows how to run it a little bit too. So really proud of how he prepared for the game, how he how he came here nice and relaxed and just went out and played. Congratulations on a huge win. And uh, no thanks for the water. Thank you.